Hi, welcome to Night Clerk Radio, episode 28. I don't have another clever title about dark jazz yet, but that's what we're doing. And before we get into that, <laughs> hi, Ross. <laughs> hi, Bert. <laughs> I was just was like, man, I can't believe I used You Like Dark Jazz for the first Dark Jazz episode. I have no foresight. That's my problem. So I need you, oh, no. my professional yeah. long-term content <laughs> creator, to keep me from doing that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, before we get into that, just want to point out that our first Patreon bonus episode is up, where we talk mm -hmm. about the history of Synthwave documentaries, our experiences listening to it, and then try to unravel the mystery of 80s nostalgia. I think it was a lot of fun. Uh, people mm -hmm. on the Discord seem to enjoy it. So thanks to everybody who has signed up. And if you do want to check that out, go to Night Clerk Radio on Patreon and join us. We'd love to have you in the mm -hmm. community. It was a fun little exploration of the genre and sort of trying to figure out why it's still popular i mean the whole thing started like a decade ago and it, it's not a fad so it, but mm -hmm. it's not like oversaturated it's real interesting to talk about a number of ways so we'll, we'll obviously revisit synthwave again but we have other genres patrons get to vote on our next bonus episode between lo-fi hip-hop and future funk so that'll be for next month i'm looking forward to it me too but uh for today we're back to dark jazz so yeah. we've discussed this a couple of times on the podcast, typically in relation to media. So we did the Dark Ambient episode where mm -hmm. you did Miles to Midnight, which was a very well-received album by listeners. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's probably the one album people would tell us the most, like, God, I didn't think I'd like that. And man, I love, <laughs> I love that album, which is yeah. great. Awesome to hear. Mm -hmm. And then we did it sort of with, with noir cinema and the like, tying it to movies, which makes sense because it's mm -hmm. where the genre gets a lot of influence. But today we're just going into really, I would say, just pure dark jazz. Just two bands yeah. who are absolute cornerstones, almost founders of the genre in some sense, mm -hmm. who have been around for a long time, 20 and 30 years. And yeah. picking two of their recent albums and really just, we'll do it after the music because I want to talk about the albums first. But I, I think we're going to sure. get in a lot into what makes it a pure dark jazz album versus a dark ambient slash dark jazz album like Miles to Midnight and mm -hmm. what that did to me as a listener. So something I was thinking a lot about while listening to these albums. Yeah, I will say that both of these albums are very dark jazz with a heavy <laughs> emphasis mm -hmm. on the jazz. So if you liked more of the dark ambient bits of Miles to Midnight, you know, keep that in mind. But I mean, there's certainly dark jazz as well. And they're not just pure jazz because there there's quite a bit of... Uh, Mm -hmm. Stuff you wouldn't see in a regular jazz <laughs> album. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that. But yeah, um, the, I have some thoughts too about like the, the emphasis on visual media for this particular genre of music. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but yeah, let's dive into the first album. I'm quite excited. Let's do it. Some little bit of synth and horn is the opening track off the album Ramsey's Redoubt. I have a bit of a cold, so I'm not going to butcher the French <laughs> by the Dale Cooper Quartet and the Dictaphones. So first, this is actually kind of interesting, Ross. These are actually artists that are big enough that we can do our normal little talk about the artists for a few minutes instead of mm -hmm. completely failing to find <laughs> anything about some vaporwave producers <laughs> alternate ego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah boy that's a good point yeah they uh there's like interviews yeah. and wikipedia pages and everything it's it's a luxurious <laughs> so the the dale cooper quartet is a french dark jazz group so they formed in 2002 after sort of an uh sounded to me like an accidental meeting but that was unclear where they were four mm -hmm. members from different bands and not even jazz bands they all have histories in like industrial and post-rock and ambient and they played mm -hmm. a little improv jazz show together in 2002 and they're like oh that was kind of fun let's do this as a real a real thing so mm -hmm. of course the dale cooper quartet the name comes from dale cooper the one of the many protagonists of twin peaks david lynch's sort of seminal tv show 
you can really tell from this, they do take a lot of inspiration from Lynch and Angelo Badalamenti, who is Lynch's uh, longtime composer. Mm -hmm. But their music really does hint at a wide range of influences. There's so much other drone and synth and industrial and other sound design and uh, mm -hmm. the jazz that there's there's a lot more to it than that. But it, it really does make sense because Lynch also loves all that noir stuff. So it's it's really a perfect infusion of influences. It's funny that the band sort of in an interview said that the uh, only real strong Twin Peaks connection is that they all love mysteries and gloomy characters. Yeah, that music definitely reflects that. Exactly. And the music throughout their albums has been this very noirish but industrial soundscapes and then a lot of classical, you know, traditional jazz playing like drums, horns, jazz guitar. Mm -hmm. So this album is interesting because it's a live album and it's it's curious and I appreciate it that they're off by a few years, but it's a uh, almost like a getting back together album. They're playing a live set at the venue where they formed almost 20 years ago, mm -hmm. which I like that they didn't do it exactly 20 years. I don't know why. That feels very marketing. This just feels like they're yeah. having fun. Um, yeah. It was recorded in 2017, I think. Mm -hmm. oh, so that's 15 years. Yeah. Damn. Oh, no. Ah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> so it's, it's a mix of songs from their different mm -hmm. albums. Yeah, but it's really interesting. So that's the first thing to say is that, yeah, they're playing a collection of their albums. So when they're live, they're more than a quartet. They also have vocalists. That's the uh, the dictaphones in the artist title. So the dictaphones are three vocalists that mm -hmm. work with them. And that's the first thing I was going to talk about before getting into specific tracks is I thought it was so interesting that they picked songs from albums that they've done over 20 years and really like blended them into kind of one long seamless performance which I really liked because there's a live album. There's no live album feel until the end. There's applause at the end of the very last track. Yeah, I was actually wondering that the first time I listened to it, what they meant by live, mm -hmm. because it, like you like you can hear that they're in a hall. Like there is a bit of echo and like, you know, some crackle, I think, from the, the recording equipment. But like the audience is totally silent yeah. for the entire performance. They're just playing for like 80 minutes straight flawlessly. It's really impressive just from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. So what did you what did you think of this album? I quite liked it. Now, one thing for both these albums, I have listened to both of these groups before, but mm -hmm. I have not like gone through their entire discography. So I'm not like a hardcore fan. So um, listening to this music, this was all sort of new to me. I basically had listened to some of these songs before, like on various playlists, you know, thanks Spotify. Looking at the kind of response I got, I felt like there were people... For me, I, I quite enjoyed it, but I could see people who are already familiar with their, their work that this doesn't add anything very new or, you know, that new because you already heard this before. It's just recorded slightly differently. For me, one of the things that I got from it, and maybe this is just sort of my misspent youth listening to The Doors a lot, uh, <laughs> but I really got a psychedelic edge to this album. Like the male vocals uh, in particular are really Jim Morrison, like this kind of had that kind of quality to me. Mm -hmm. There's some sudden shifts in the album that just are pretty jarring. Like they're, they're very gripping and like grab your attention, but there's this really, this oscillation between very slow, very, almost very ambient languid kind of music. And then it's like, bam, here's mm -hmm. some industrial noise. And then just these lovely like duets and like the vocals. I like both the male and the female vocals. Mm -hmm. They're really really, I mean, talented singers and just really blended well with the music. You know, when I was looking up this group, I didn't research as much as you did. And their first album wasn't like in 2006. So if they formed in 2002, they took like four years to get their first album together. Yeah, that's true. I don't know how seriously, you know, they worked exclusively on Dale Cooper Quartet stuff. That's kind of something that we'll see with our, our next group as well. We could almost rename this podcast is Night Clerk Radio, Side Projects of Industrial <laughs> and Metal Artists, because that just seems to be a reoccurring motif of like these people who are doing industrial music or, or various flavors of metal are turning to this because they find it more artistically rewarding. But yeah, which is ironic, given that this podcast itself is a side project for one of us. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that means it's going to be. Oh, OK. Yeah. And it has artistic integrity. Exactly. Yeah. 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 OK. So I actually do, since the opening sample did not give people an idea of these vocals, and I do agree that the mm -hmm. vocals are amazing throughout this. Let me play a bit from track five, where there's these synths and then bass and then the vocals come in. Chance. 
so this is about 45 seconds into track five. A lot of songs have this type of construction. Like, I guess you can argue that the structure is a lot of the same time to time, Mm -hmm. but I don't mind because I like it. There's this moody, wonderful synth and then this bass. And then, man, when those uh, female vocals come in, Mm -hmm. they are just chilling. Yeah. I was was surprised because I don't know about you. I'm not always a huge fan of vocals in music. Like, I have to be in a very specific mood to want to have lyrics. Mm-hmm. And I think it really worked for me on this album. Yeah. Partially because it's so thematic and a lot of the vocals are, are so dramatic. Also probably because they're mm-hmm. not in English, so I don't really know what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, that kind of helps actually. Which is it's like a weird thing, right? With helps me become detached from lyrics because sometimes lyrics can be dumb, right? Yeah. I think the problem with the lyric, with the vocals, is is it integrated into the music to sort of create, you know, Mm -hmm. the the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, right? And what we see in a lot of, like, especially, I think, pop music, is that this song is a vehicle for a singer, celebrity, and so they're going to emphasize the hook, the earworm nature of it, Mm -hmm. and trying to get you to get that song burned into your brain. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not about like just creating the best piece of music you can of treating the vocals as another instrument to be resonant or dissonant with the other yeah instrumentation. So obviously as a side project, these are people doing it for the love of music and like love of this type of music. And so they don't give a shit about, you know, anything other than the, the final product, uh, the final song. So for me, like singing is a, a mixed bag. There's sometimes when it's, I don't want that, especially when I'm working or writing, mm-hmm. but in some other genres, you know, I listen to a lot of drum and bass and like they have vocals there and that's again, just instrumentation. I agree. I think not wanting vocals when you're working, I think is also a good point because that's the bulk of the time I listen to music, unfortunately, is because uh, I'm mm-hmm. doing something else. And yeah, as soon as there's words that triggers like that audio processing, like, oh, a human's talking to me, part of my brain. Mm-hmm. And then the... <laughs> You're like, oh, I have to listen to what they're saying. And then it no longer becomes really effective work music. Mm -hmm. That's true. But in this, it it totally works. You know, one thing that both of our albums have is the use of like these sort of, not quite evangelists, but these synth soundscapes like Track 10, Mm -hmm. this album, kind of this airy, ethereal kind of feeling that they like to evoke at various times. But in this album, they really like then like, aha, here's this. And then here's some industrial noise to just wake you up. Yeah. Yes. So I, totally. I agree. The I would love to see their tech set up for this show just because of the wide range mm-hmm. of sounds and textures and tones covered for a live show. Again, mm-hmm. also seamlessly was really interesting. But yeah, I, I do have a comment about the occasional very industrial sample because track 11 it just sounds like a jet engine is revving up for like 30 <laughs> seconds. It, and there's other sound processing and effects going on, but I'm pretty sure it's just like a turbine. Why don't we just put in like just a, just a little, just a little like a uh, little sample. A little taste. A little taste. <laughs> They sample a turbine and then just play it back. Uh, did they? <laughs> I'm sure have a modular synthesizer, like because some of those old weird, mm-hmm. you know, synths can make some weird ass sounds. Oh yeah, that was the whole appeal of those modular synths is you just could plug every wire into each other mm-hmm. until you got whatever you wanted. One thing I mentioned earlier, but I really do like the crackling, like the, mm. the sort of like the lo-fi grunginess of it. It really does sound like, even though it's a live performance, it's like you're listening to it on a vinyl that's mm-hmm. kind of, that's a little dusty, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just in a smoke-filled, dusty detective's office, drinking shots of whiskey, staring out the window as you contemplate your last case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So about the the crackle... I, I've been trying to figure out, I, I feel like that's intentional. That feels like it has to be some sort of intentional processing. Oh, it's 100% on purpose. Yeah. Like, I mean, and even if they're doing like a white stripes or recording tape to tape, mm-hmm. you know, real to real mm-hmm. or whatever, like, I mean, I could see a group being that kind of, this group being that indulgent mm-hmm. uh, uh, for, because <laughs> that's the whole point is to to indulge, you know, their own musical yeah. niche taste. Yeah, it's to do whatever you yeah. want. Instead of the music that pays the bills. <laughs> exactly. 
do you think there's the psychedelic edge? Am I just imagining that? Do you do you see like the doors in this at all? At least at least because like the electric guitar coming in at points, like just kind of that distant. Is that am I just imagining because the male vocals do sound a bit like that? They do have that Morrison kind of crooning going on a little mm -hmm. bit. I, I don't disagree. Yeah, there. crooning's a good way of putting it. But yeah. it's not quite crooning, because crooning I think of as being like a little less skillful. And I think the person's a, a much better singer than most people who they think of as like crooners. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that smooth, just very smooth, the deep male, like quintessential 40s, mm -hmm. 50s era vocals. Yeah, but it's interesting. I didn't really think psychedelic in a way I almost did more about your album because yeah. your album features a lot of road electric pianos, which is like a very specific electric keyboard that I associate mm -hmm. heavily with the Doors because the Doors keyboard has played it and Herbie Hancock and Chick Corea and all those people. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, do you want to move on? <laughs> yeah, I think covered a pretty good amount of this. So I'll just final thoughts it and say that, you know, it's a longer album, but it's definitely worth it. And I think if you liked any part of Miles to Midnight, you should definitely check it out. I mean, obviously, I think it's a great album. was the title track, track four of Patchouli Blues by Borin and Der Club of Gore, a German dark jazz group that has been around since 1992. They are probably the single most foundational dark jazz group out there. And again, it is a side project of various metal musicians. They've had some changes over the years, but this is an album they released actually last year. And it is, again, I am not an exhaustive fan of this group. I do enjoy them, but I have not like listened to every album enough to mm -hmm. identify them on, you know, upon listen. But judging from what I read of other people's reactions, this is true to form. And I think track four, the title track is probably the single best track in there. But I mean, I don't know. I like this mm -hmm. very slow contemplative music shifting from like sort of ambient soundscapes to jazz mm. and there's a bit of there's a lot of synth in there mm -hmm. a lot of these modular synths like you mentioned but there's also things like a guitar there's a vibraphone uh, mm. <laughs> which is great i think i like this album more than the ramses uh, mm -hmm. from dale cooper but it goes to a lot of different places we even get a little sci-fi synthesizer at the end there are bits that remind me of solaris it's mostly like this this tenor sax doing a lot of work i described some of it as like a lounge music for a funeral oh yeah i i love this album i also liked it more than dale cooper i'm sorry david but yeah it just had <laughs> so many elements that i just really really loved i loved all of the warm synth like there's so many interesting synth intros on all mm -hmm. these tracks mm -hmm. track six was one that i really liked a lot yeah, it's almost like a synthwave piece, like a very mm -hmm. slow, kind of like moody. In fact, why don't we play a sample of that?
it's about halfway through the uh, the track. I quite liked it. So yeah, that was really great. The one you say was Solaris reminiscent on the last track. Yep, mm, beautiful. That's the one I was joking with you about. Just give me drone synths forever because I was just <laughs> at the end of a long listening session because I was just listening to both albums back to back. So it's like you know two and a half hours, and mm-hmm. I just felt like I was just melting into my chair. I was like, just do this forever. <laughs> those opening that those opening few minutes of synth just hit me with that forever. Yeah. Just stuff like that. Just those highs were just amazing. One thing I do, just the, these little motifs that go on, like they have these guitar twangs throughout the day. Give it almost like mm-hmm. a Western feel at various points. It's, it's like the motif of a character walking through the door, just like a little sting. Like track nine has these really bass, very deep bass. It's almost like a blong kind mm-hmm. of like uh, an inception sound. <laughs> There's quite a bit. So... It's a very moody album. It's a very meditative album. It's very, very, uh, I would say more jazz focused because it, it doesn't have any sort of like really erupt shifts like the uh, Dale Cooper quartet has. Yeah, sometimes when the horns come in, even though I expected every track after a while, it still mm-hmm. is like a little like, mm, I liked my synths. Aww. But it's good enough that it's not worth getting too worried about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very smooth overall. I agree. I think a lot of that just comes from consistent instrumentation. Like I, I said on the previous segment, you know, this album has a lot of roads, which mm-hmm. is like one of my favorite keyboards. It's like such a, a wonderful idea because it's not a synthesizer, like a piece of hardware synthesizing sounds. Mm-hmm. It's actually an electric piano, much like an electric guitar. So it has hammers and keys and it hits a string, but it hits a little metal string that gets amplified like an electric guitar. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was invented <laughs> in like the 40s by some army corps engineer and that's just like that very unique sound and you notice as you hear it because it's iconically played by so many important keyboardists like i mentioned hancock and chicoria mm-hmm. and the doors which is what well, you made me think of it and it's not alone there are some other like earlier like there's a mellotron on the album mm-hmm. and some moog modular synthesizers although i don't know exactly which ones there's quite a bit so it's a really good synthesis of like traditional instruments and, and electric instruments and uh, synthesizers. It really is like not noir, like film noir. It's not the black and white stuff. It's it's the neo noir, like the people who grew up watching that mm-hmm. then made their own sort of noir movies. And like this is what this album is about is uh, sort of like taking the ideas of noir and expanding on it, making it more surreal or existential and it's a really good listen at home and relax and you know but you don't want to be too happy you don't want to have something too (laughs) positive too chipper no not at all i do want to say there are some bits that even remind me of john carpenter like some of these the synthesizers go like in track 10 Mm -hmm. it it begins to sound like the opening track of of a carpenter movie so they're covering a wide range. And then, like, you go back to track nine, which is, like, the vibraphone, and you have this, it's like a mystery, you know, movie from, like, the 60s almost. And covering a wide range of sort of ideas and motifs, and it's just overall a really nice experience. So I think that brings me to kind of the, at least the final thing I wanted to talk about with both these albums, mm-hmm. which we hinted at earlier, was the idea of the dark jazz album versus the dark ambient album with dark jazz elements. Because as I was listening to your album, I was like, wait, do I like this more? Because it's not just some concept album or some Mm -hmm. fake movie tie in or whatever, but it's just like an album of music that people wanted to make. And it's been so long since I've listened to that, that I forgot that just, Mm -hmm. just musical albums exist. I don't know. (laughs) You know, like it's, it's just literally haunted because it's kind of spooky music, not because you know, the rays mm-hmm. of sunshine in the background are the specter of Reaganism. <laughs> yeah, this, this music is haunted, not by like, you know, <laughs> hauntology, right. but in a more traditional sense. But it's also haunted by like visual media because mm-hmm. every type of music it, it, you can associate with some kind of visual media because there's there's so much out there. But like, if you think, think of like pop music and rock music versus like dark jazz, dark jazz you can is so strongly intertwined with noir neo-noir you know david lynch and very specific visual media Mm -hmm. and references whereas rock music is not really yeah i mean the rock music can mean so many different things to so many people but dark jazz is a very very specific aesthetic and a lot of this music that we listen to that we review here is is music that is very much based on the idea of storytelling the idea Mm -hmm. of like 
And in this, the story is that it's a music, like I said, of smoky and quiet bars of desperate people lost in themselves. Mm. It's a music of mystery and regret. It's the personal haunting, the haunting by your own decisions or the haunting of yeah the characters that you're watching. Mm -hmm. So I was just making sure it wasn't me or that I was being unfair because I was like, mm -hmm. you know, if you just took one of these, not that you should or anything, just slapped it on cryo chamber and gave it like a cryo chamber album cover and a paragraph mm -hmm. description of... Detective Nick Marcus went into so-and-so <laughs> hotel. What happened to him? Like, would that change what I think about the album? Do I get affected by those types of genre hints? You, neither of these are cryogenic. Oh, no, like, no. There's, there's, no. There's, there's too much of a beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not enough in between just field recordings or mm -hmm. just real drone. There are soundscapes, but they're mm. interrupted by actual jazz. Like, this is actual. <laughs> Another thing is that both of these albums are European. Like, mm -hmm. um, so, you know, jazz is obviously an American, was created in America, but then became worldwide after we exported it through, you know, not just music, but also as, you know, to extenuate noir movies. And, you know, decades later, this is like how the Europeans digested and then interpreted that music mm -hmm. you know, to, to build upon it. You know, the Dale Cooper Quartet is French and this Boren uh, or the Club of Gore is German. It's something that, again, I'm not an expert on those sort of areas, but it's just, God, it's fascinating to listen to this kind of music that I'm not exposed to as much because, you know, I listen to American jazz. I don't listen to <laughs> European jazz that mm -hmm. much, but I quite like it. If this is what it's all like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's something to explore further on. So, yeah, again, we're covering haunted music in all, all senses of the word. And sometimes it's just because, you know, you shot the wrong guy in that last case, and now she's blackmailing you for it, and you need to do one more job before you can retire. Hey, we've all been there. <laughs> you know, music for digging shallow graves in the woods at night, or for thinking about what you've done as you're cleaning up in the bathroom after you've gotten back and you've burned your clothes. And you sure have a lot of examples of regrettable behavior just right off the top of your head. <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're entirely hypothetical. What can I say? Thanks so much for listening. It was a lot of fun to dig into some classic dark jazz albums, and I legitimately hope that people are listening check these out and enjoy them as much as like they enjoyed Miles to Midnight, because I think these are really, really great albums of a really interesting genre. Mm -hmm. That being said, next episode, we're heading back into the Vaporwave land. We're going to be covering albums from Vaporwave artists R23X and Equip both of whom do video game fantasy themed vaporwave, I think is the best way to put it. A lot of Final Fantasy art and Castlevania type art, mm -hmm. Katamari Damacy for R23X. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. There is a Townsoft album among mm. there. So think of Mallsoft, but it's for an RPG town. I am a sucker for the soft genres. <laughs> Might have to check that one out. As we said earlier, our Synthwave episode is up on our Patreon, and the poll for the next episode will be up shortly. It's going to be between Future Funk and Lo-Fi Hip Hop. So if you're not already a member of our Patreon, definitely head over to Nightclerk Radio uh, on Patreon.com and sign up and vote and join us, chat with us, and look at all of our silly links on our Discord and uh, mm -hmm. participate in what we do for our bonus episodes. If you want to talk to us otherwise, you can find us on Twitter at Nightclerk Radio. Ross is at Ross Payton. I am at Burke McBurkinson. For Night Clerk Radio, everywhere else you can want to look for us, nightclerkradio.com, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you do listen to us. If they have a way to rate and review us, please do. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever, word of mouth, tell other people, tweet about us. Mm -hmm. That's all great. You can also find us on YouTube at Night Clerk Radio, where I try to respond to comments. People have been having actually pretty interesting discussions in the comments about episodes, especially the Hauntology episode. So that's another way that you can reach out and get to interact with us. 
That being said, thanks for listening, and uh, we hope to see you next time. Thank you.